So for days now, there's been some buzz on social media about a potential tropical system developing the Gulf of Mexico in the month of April. I mean, can we just enjoy ourselves until hurricane season starts June 1st, right? Well, as we look back in the history books, there have been cyclones recorded in the month of April across the Atlantic Basin. However, you may notice nothing ever in the month of April in the Gulf of Mexico. And in fact, if we look back on when we saw our last cyclone develop in the month of April, it was back in 2017 when we had tropical storm Arlene. Now it just was a fish storm swirled out in the middle of the Atlantic near the Azores, but not impacting a whole lot of us, right? What do we actually need for things to be called a tropical cyclone? Well, first of all, a tropical system has to be a warm core non frontal cyclone. So a synoptic scale system that's on its own churning with a closed well defined center of circulation. That's the cyclone part of it. Organized thunderstorms around the center. And by the way, it gets a name with winds that are greater than or equal to 39 miles miles per hour. So a lot has to happen for us to actually call it a tropical cyclone. 2023, our names start with Arlene. Isn't that something? Back in 2017, that's when we had our last April named storm and it happened to be Arlene. And those are recycled every single uh, six years or so when we uh, don't, of course, see them retired when they're not deadly or not destructive enough. We use those names every six years. So let's look at what we've got this year and why maybe people are starting to post about a cyclone in the Gulf in April. If we look at our 500 millibar upper level winds, okay, we've got a low pressure system that could be developing. Now remember the tropical cyclone has to transition to the surface. It has to be a warm core, not associated with any fronts. This one, guess what? We're going to have an associated warm front and a trailing cold front along with it. And we are going to see this low pressure move over to the Gulf of Mexico just briefly Wednesday and into Thursday. But it quickly pulls back over the Gulf Coast and it brings that front over the Sunshine State. Eventually the trailing cold front as well. If we look at those water temperatures, that's one thing that we need for those tropical cyclones to develop and sustain themselves. Lower 80s is what you typically need. We do have that, in fact, with those warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the central Gulf. However, where is this low pressure going to develop? In the northern Gulf. And those water temperatures are going to be uh, just barely at that criteria. So if it's not over the waters long enough, you can't get that cyclone to develop and sustain itself. It's going to pop back over land. Nonetheless, we are going to see plenty of beneficial rains come in across the southeast, specifically the Sunshine State. And guess what? We so desperately could use this rain with a lot of uh, drought condition across the Sunshine State, including abnormally dry conditions here at home. A lot of wildfires out in central Florida as well. So this is much needed rain. But no, if you ask me if a hurricane is going to be forming in the Gulf this week, again, I would say that's false. We'll keep an eye on, uh, of course, those tropical troubles as we get closer on in the hurricane season and continue to stay tuned to your First Coast News weather team.